number, everything will be just fine. What the operating system will do, and you can do this as well, is choose port numbers above 49,000 all the way up to 65,535. One clear thing to remember is that when you have an app or you're running the live code IDE, you request the operating system to open a port for you. So the operating system is the part of your, of your computer that really controls the ports. It manages them. And every program that opens up probably requests some sort of port protocol. And we'll get into a little bit of jargon here in a moment, but just remember that you're asking your operating system to open a port and manage it for you. And when you use UDP to communicate to another computer or another program on your computer, again, the operating system has to manage the port for the destination of your communication packets. So one keyword we're going to use here is the port, and that means that your operating system opens up a communication channel using a certain number, and you tell it what protocol. In live code, you can ask for a TCP port or a UDP port. They are different, and the way you handle things is differently, is done differently. And we're not going to get into those details today, but we're going to focus on UDP packets. I want to take a moment to explain why you would use UDP in the first place. UDP is used by Vonage and Skype and other services where sending a packet and not caring whether it's received or not is just fine. And if packets get lost or they don't get to the other end in good shape, it doesn't really matter because there's a steady stream of small packets coming right behind. Now, in my applications, and when I tell you a couple stories later, I actually want to make sure that data arrived at the other end of the, of the, of the packet transfer and acknowledge that but I built my own little protocol for that because what was more important is the speed of the UDP. Generally, it's about 10 times faster than TCP for transferring the same amount of data. TCP is a protocol that says, first, before sending anything, you're going to connect to the destination and make sure there's a connection. Once there's a connection, now you're going to send data. If you send some data, let's say you send a few lines of data, and then you don't send any data for maybe 10, 15 minutes, the other end computer system, operating system, will likely go ahead and 10 minute timeout close the port. What you need to do now is send another please open the port and handshake and then send more data. So if you're Working with TCP, you first establish the connection and then use it. And the system administrator on the other end could say, well, I'll leave it open for 60 minutes. In order for you to keep the port open, you need to keep sending a, a, a one little ping, a packet, every nine minutes. If, that's your, if your timeout is 10 minutes, that'll keep the port open for as many days, weeks, and months as you would like but you got to have something that says keep sending that packet. With UDP, it doesn't, that's not a requirement. It doesn't matter. The idea is that you're going to send to a receiving program that has been set up to listen. And it'll sit there and listen as long as the operating system leaves the port open and there's no real conflict in the operating system like it slows down or gets other things going if you reboot the computer, you need to start up the app or the IDE if you're using live code, launch your stack, click the button to establish once again you want that port and you want to listen. Now, we're not going to get into the details of why a firewall, a router, or other system might interfere, but let's just assume that you can talk to the operating system and say, I want port number 4567. To, for UDP, and it says, you're open, ready to go. The other end would be an app, and I'll show you that here in just a moment, an app that would say, I want to listen on port 4567, 
and it asks the operating system, I want that, and I want to listen, and the operating system says, there you go, you've got it. It can be on the same computer. It can be on the same computer system, like a local area network, or it could be clear across continents. And I've successfully done this between Seattle and London, and had UDP packets being transferred with me 